I want you to understand today that there is power in what you say. The Bible says to call those things that be not as though they were. It also says that life and death is in the power of the tongue. So wherever you are today, I want you to just stop what you're doing and make this confession. Say, Lord, I take, Lord, I take the, authority the authority in your word you gave me. I can speak to the mountain, be cast in the sea. I can speak life and life abundantly. Come on, say it again. Say, Lord, I take the authority in your word you gave me. I can speak to the mountain, tell it to be cast in the sea. I can speak life and life abundantly. Come on, sing this thing. I can bet that I'm above and not beneath. Come on, sing. I can bet that I'm not bound, but I'm free. Yeah, that's it. I can bet that I have more than I need. Yeah, I can bet that money cometh to me. Come on, Soprano, sing. I can bet. Yeah, there's power in the word. I feel faith rising. Come on, say it again. Sing, Lord, I take, Lord, I take the, authority. the authority. Yeah, that's it. In your word, you, gave, your me. Word you gave me. Come on, say, I can speak, I can speak to, the to the mountain. Be cast in the sea. In the sea. I can speak I can life see. and life abundantly. And life now say this one. Sing, I confess I can that I'm the head and not the tail. Not the tail. Yeah, say, I confess I, I won't lose, but I'll prevail. Hallelujah. Sing, I confess that I'll fulfill my destiny. <laughs> yeah, sing, I confess that I have power in me. Come on, Soprano, say it again. I confess by your word. Yeah, God responds to his word. Yeah, come on, sing, I know that, that death and life to the power of the tongue. By my testimony, that's what the word says. I confess. Yeah, come on, declare it again, sing, I know that death and life are in the power of the tongue. By my testimony, I'll overcome. I confess. By your word. I confess. Yeah, wherever you are, just lift your voice and sing this. I confess that I'm a bird.
Harvest in the Nation, we've come this morning to worship with you. As we worship together, we're going to give glory to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Y'all ready? Come on, put your hands on it right here. Father, we celebrate you this morning. You are the only true and living God.
soon as y'all sing this with me right here. I'm so glad I got my feet on the rock. Come on, I hear y'all singing already. I'm not sad. I got my feet on the rock. Say it, I'm sad. I got my feet on the rock to stay. Jesus Christ, the solid rock. Come on, sing it right here. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I got my feet, got my feet on the rock. Uh -huh. I'm not sad, no. I'm not sad. I got my feet, I got yeah. my feet on the rock. Say that's mad, oh yeah. Say that's mad. Cause I got my, I got feet, my yeah. feet on the rock uh -huh. to stay. Jesus, Jesus Christ, the solid rock. Solid Come on, rock. tell somebody in your room. Tell them, don't give up. Don't give up. Tell them keep your feet on keep the rock. Keep your feet on the rock. Uh huh. No matter what. No matter what. Just keep your keep your feet on the rock. Uh -huh. Tell them to say keep looking keep up. Keep looking up. Uh huh. Keep your feet on the rock. Yeah. To stay. Jesus. Jesus Christ. The solid rock. The solid tell somebody rock. else. Tell them don't give up. Don't give up. Keep your, keep your feet, feet on the rock. No matter what you're going through. No matter yeah. what. Just Sing this right here. Sing firm foundation, firm foundation, firm foundation, firm foundation. Sing firm foundation, firm foundation, firm foundation, firm foundation. Somebody say firm foundation, firm foundation, firm foundation, firm foundation, firm foundation, firm foundation, firm foundation. Firm foundation. Listen. Firm Jesus praise in the room. <laughs> Listen, all of the grounds are sinking sand. And Jesus is our firm foundation. And we stand on him this morning. Would you take a moment and just worship him as we stand on his 
foundation this morning. Father, we worship you. We bless your name. We give you honor and glory. Come on, y'all sing it right here. My hope is built. My hope is built on nothing less uh -huh. than Jesus' blood. Than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust. I dare not trust the sweetest frame. Yeah. But holy trust. But holy trust in Jesus' name. Uh -huh. Come on, we're gonna say that verse again. My hope. My hope is built on nothing less yeah. than Jesus' blood. Than Jesus' blood and righteousness. And righteousness. Father, we glorify you. I dare not trust. I dare not trust the sweetest frame. Uh -huh. But holy trust. But holy trust in Jesus' name. Come on, let's lift it up right here. Sing Christ alone. Christ alone. Cornerstone. Cornerstone. Yeah, the weak made strong. We made strong. In the Savior's in love. The Savior's love. Yeah, through the storm. Through the storm. He is Lord. He is Lord. And Lord of all. Lord of all. I want to do that chorus again. Come on, everybody, sing it again. Sing Christ. Christ alone. Cornerstone. You say you want to really get connected with believers and followers of Christ. Well, it's really simple. Just go to our Christ Center Church Facebook page. Go to the More tab and click Groups. From there, you'll see the Christ Center Nation group and click Join. Finding your tribe has never been so easy when you join Christ Center Nation today. Good morning, Christ Center Nation. Welcome to Christ Center Online. I'm so glad to see you this morning. Thank you for being here. My name is Tim Fryer. I'm the lead pastor here at Christ Center Church, and I am excited to be with you this morning. I'm excited about the things that the Lord is doing, uh, and I hope you can sense it, not just in our midst, but in the world, what he's doing. Um, he is doing some amazing things, and my prayer is that we are all uh, in tune with what the Lord is doing. Hey, today, I'm ready 
to jump in and go forward. Y'all ready? Okay. Uh, I'm excited. And so I say, let's go. Uh, if you haven't given, would you give all the giving information is right here on the screen. It's also in the chat. If you're on Facebook, it's there. And um, you can invite people to come in or send the link later or whatever works for you. But I'm excited about um, doing what God has called me to do here today, what my assignment is today. So let's pray together and then we will move forward in this series. Father, in Jesus name, I thank you this morning for your presence here. I thank you, Lord, that you are uh, speaking and moving in the midst of your people, that you are perfecting those things that concern us. And I thank you, God, that you are uh, speaking to us very specifically and clearly. I pray, Father, that you would uh, open our ears, that we will hear from you, that you would open our spirits, that we'll receive, that the eyes of our understanding may be enlightened in this season. So my prayer today is that you would think through my mind, speak through my mouth, give me clarity of thought and agility of wit. Allow me to talk in the power of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. So this series, everybody, has really been um, a blessing to me. And I'm moving toward our closing the series out. But I still have uh, a few more things that the Lord has dropped in my spirit for us to say. And um, we're going to take the next few Sundays as we're closing, coming to the end of this series. And I want to talk to you about faith. And so we're calling this part of the series, Unlocking More, the Faith Edition. Now I'm excited about, about this whole series. And I, I'll tell you, um, this series for me is probably one of the best series I've ever done uh, I think in the career of my preaching and I, I, I mean this is just from my side and my whole preaching career this is one of the most comprehensive teachings uh, I've ever done and it's interesting because um, you know having gone to school and gotten I've, I got a degree I got a bachelor's degree in biblical education um, what I've been taught is that of course as messengers or preachers, we preach the gospel, that we preach what God says to the people. The other thing that I have learned in this time, or in the time of school, is what's called pastoral theology. And pastoral theology is when we teach or preach uh, from the felt needs of the people that we preach. So preaching what God is saying is preaching God's word to the people, what God says the people need to hear. But then pastoral theology and preaching the felt needs says that we preach what the people are saying they need to hear. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so this series for me has been a series that has perfect alignment with the two of those that we are preaching what God is saying, but God is also saying what we need to hear. And so I'm excited about that and excited about this series. And so, you know, as we started the series, we started the series talking about service. OK, um, if you haven't he heard the series, go back, listen to them. Um, Apostle Diane Kyler who's a daughter, one of my daughters in the faith, and I'm excited about her. She has uh, come in under uh, Christ-centered as it relates to me giving oversight to her. And she's that's since the pandemic. And so she's in Alabama. And um, she said to me one day, I have binged watched the whole series, uh, particularly the series, the part of it on tithing. She said, I heard what you preached Sunday, and then I went and binged watch. If you haven't heard this series, I would encourage you to listen to these, this series. Listen to it for what the Lord is saying um, in stretching you and growing you, but also listen to what he's saying prophetically for the body. And so we started with service, 
Then we went to giving. Okay. Then the last few weeks we've been talking about managing or stewardship. And so now we're going to be talking about faith. Okay. My goal here is for those of you who may be young uh, or new to the faith. I'm, I'm, I'm teaching this to ignite your faith. Uh, for some of you, I'm teaching this to reignite your faith, to refocus your faith, or to remind you of your faith, okay? Now, I want to be clear, and I'm going to take my time here, so uh, we'll, you know, I'm, I'm watching my time, so if we have to finish it next week, we could pick it up next week. Um, but I do want to be clear that when I'm talking about faith, I'm not talking about having faith in faith. <laughs> and, and so that's some of the challenge that I think some of us deal with is that we have faith in faith. OK, I've seen it. and I've been in church for a long time, all, all my life. And so I've seen that people celebrate faith and memes about faith and declare I got faith. But what I've come to understand is in the body of Christ and in the church, the church world. Um, oh, wait, that's two different. That's two different things. The body of Christ and the church. Just because you come to church don't mean you're in the body of Christ. Look how you're looking. Yeah, I, I don't want to chase that rabbit. I'm not going to chase that rabbit, but I do want to be clear that there is a difference. That just because you come to church doesn't mean you're in the body of Christ, that you have aligned yourself with the body, that you're walking with the movement. Come on. And so some of the challenge is both in the body and in the church world that people have faith in faith, that they feel like because I have faith, I'm going to get this and I'm claiming this and I'm doing this because I have faith. Well, I want to be clear and I want to I want to say this to you. I'm not talking about having faith in faith. OK, in, in this particular talk, I'm not even talking about the faith of Hebrews that says uh, now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of not of things not seen. I'm not even talking about that right now because that is a description or that is more or less the characteristic of faith. OK, when we start talking about faith that this level is foundational, it, it is what I believe. Listen, and who I believe in. So you cannot have faith in faith. You got to have faith in God. And I do not want to take it for granted and not say that to you. Because just because people come to church and they say, I have faith, that doesn't mean that they have faith in God. You cannot have faith in faith. You got to have faith in God. What are you saying to me? Here it is. I'm going to say something that may be controversial and my, I hope it don't offend you, but I'm going to say it anyway. There is no power. In faith. Oh boy. Let me finish it. There is no power in faith if the faith is not in the right source. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Okay, so consider this consider a light bulb, a lamp, and a power strip. Okay? All three of them together have the ability to change a dark situation, but only if they're connected to the right source. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Just because you have a light bulb that works and a lamp that works and a power strip that works. If the three of them don't come together and get plugged into the right source, they are nothing. Your faith is a medium of exchange. Your faith is this is what I believe, but this is what I believe in. This is who I believe in. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So then your faith has to be in God. Somebody put that in the chat. Faith in God. Mm -hmm. And if you ain't scared, put it in the chat. Not in faith. I don't have faith in faith. 
I have faith in God. My faith is my tool. It is the extension cord that I plug into the source in order to extract the power. Come on to unlock more. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? So here's, here's what Jesus teaches. Okay. So watch this in Mark chapter 11. And this is not our text for the day. I'll get to our text uh, in a little bit. But in Mark chapter 11, verse around verse 20, or a little bit before, we find that Jesus is walking with his disciples and he um, speaks or curses uh, a fig tree because the fig tree was not bearing fruit. So he cursed the fig tree. And the next morning, Here's what it says. Verse 20 says, this is Mark 11, verse 20 says, now in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter said, remembering, and Peter remembering said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree, which you, which you cursed has withered away. So watch the response of Jesus. And Jesus answered and said to them, here it is, have faith in God. Mm hmm. He said, for surely I say to you that whoever says to this mountain, be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believe those things that he says will be done and he will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive, you will have them. OK, so here's what Jesus does when Peter. Now, you get you got to hear this and process this in the amazement and the astonishment that Peter has. Because as they are walking with Jesus, they are learning more about him. So this is something they had not seen before. So the next morning when they see that it's dried up, he's like, whoa, Jesus. Teacher, that's what he says. Teacher, the fig tree that you cursed died. And I like that Jesus steps in. And what he does is he directs Peter's faith. I know, Peter, that you are seeing something you've never seen. I know you heard me curse the tree. Now you see that what I cursed is now dead and you're excited. He says, but before your faith goes crazy, let me tell you where your faith has to be. He says, have faith in God. He doesn't even say have faith in me. He says, have faith in God. And if you are going to unlock more, your faith has to be in God. If y'all with me, somebody hit some hearts, put some thumbs ups in the chat. If you get, if you get what I'm saying, okay, because I want to talk to you about faith because we can't talk about faith and unlocking more if we don't understand that faith has to be in God. Now, as we have dealt with serving and giving and stewardship, those would be the things that we have to do. It's the works. OK, so I kind of went in or the Holy Ghost has kind of led me in on the backside because James teaches us that faith without works is dead being alone. And so what we have found in order for us to lock, unlock more, we started with these works that the Holy Spirit uh, kind of uh, lifted up in me for me to share with you. So we got these, this giving or this service, this giving, this stewardship. And I, my prayer is that you, you let that soak in because you, you just can't give it all. We got to give, but you also got to serve. You got to make yourself available. OK, just go back and listen to all of that. So in order to unlock more. We have to have faith. OK, now let's look at our text for today. Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17, I'm going to start reading at verse 14 and we're going to lift up some truths out of this text. It's a familiar text. Watch what it says. And when they had come. To the multitude, a man came to him kneeling down or kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son. 
for he is an epileptic and suffers severely. For he often falls into the fire and often into the water. So I brought him to your disciples. But they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him here to me. And Jesus rebuked the demon and it came out of him. And the child was cured from that very hour. Then the disciples came to Jesus and privately said, why could we not cast it out? So Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief. For assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you would say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move and nothing will be impossible for you. However, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. So far, our scripture reading today. So let's take some time to unpack this text. Although we do not know much about the father. However, I am certain that by his actions, he's a man of faith. Why? He had to believe enough to bring him to Jesus or in this case to his disciples. Think about it. He had to bring the boy, whether he was a Christ follower or not. He believed or sometimes he, he could probably here's another angle. Other angle could be I'm so sick of this. I am. I am painting because my son is sick. And I'm willing to try anything. But I believe that there is a level of faith and belief in him because he brought the boy to Jesus. And so what the father that we do not know much about teaches us today that I want to talk to you about. He teaches us about these postures. There's a posture of faith. If we are going to unlock more, (laughs) there is a posture that we have to have as we are using our faith as an old song uh, that was written centuries ago that says that uh, uh, prayer is the key and faith unlocks the door. I know many people thought that was in the Bible. Tell your grandmama that ain't okay. Trust me. I looked, I could not find it. Um, (laughs) However, it is, it, it is, it is the truth that we have to use our faith. But I want to say this to you, that there is a posture that we have to use in our faith as we approach God. Y'all ready? Let's look at it. He teaches us uh, these postures and in coming to Jesus with faith, here's the first thing he did. Uh, here's the first posture. He comes to Jesus. Okay. So if you're writing down, you write this down. He comes to Jesus. Yeah, that's a posture of faith coming to Jesus. Okay. The fact that he comes tells me that there is a level of belief. And I got to I got to say this and I want to kind of see again. I, I want to shake the tree and remind us that when life gets heavy and you feel like, man, I can't take this. I am hopeless. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know. I'm sick of this. I don't know how to get how to get over this or get out of this situation. We have to come to Jesus. But I believe the first step of faith is coming to Jesus. And oftentimes we go to our friends and we go to social media and we start putting these memes in there or we start typing to pray for me. I don't Hey, go to Jesus. We put these cryptic texts, these cryptic posts on, you know, I don't want to tell you my business, but I want you to pray for me. Go to Jesus. Look how y'all looking. Hebrews 11, <laughs> 6 says this. It's impossible. This is from the Message Bible. It's impossible to please God apart from 
faith. And why? Because anyone who wants to approach God must believe both that he exists and that he cares enough to respond to those who seek him. That's why we go to him. Our faith starts at the place of going to God and saying, I know that you exist. You run everything. I know that you care about me and the things that affect my life. The word teaches us that we have not such a high priest who cannot be felt with the feelings of our infirmities. He has felt Jesus has felt frustration. He felt, can I get out of this? Is there another way out? He's felt that. He's felt anger. Come on, he's, he's felt that. I, I don't even want to start talking about start talking about the fact that Jesus may have felt ridiculed and alone prior to people knowing who he is. What are you saying? Uh, remember now, when Jesus was born, the decree went out, kill every male child. And then Mary and Joseph scoops him up and, and takes him to Egypt to hide out. So there could be a lot of people looking at him like. You are Jesus from Nazareth. Why are you still here when my son or my grandson was killed? That's a, look, that's a whole nother, that's a, see, we got to start looking at all of that. The, the, the outside feeling of Jesus feeling, maybe he felt like I'm not a part of this community because people are kind of wondering why am I still alive? Yeah, he has felt what we feel. And as we approach Jesus or as we approach God, we have to approach God that says, I know you care about. The stuff that concerns me. Are y'all with me? Y'all hear me? So here's so number one. He comes to Jesus. Wait, let me stay there for a second. I hear you. Holy Ghost. When was the last time you went to God first? When was the last time when the situation hit? You went straight to him. Before getting on the phone. When was the last time. You went straight to him. Before running to whatever. Used to fix or help solve your problem. When was the last time you went straight to him. And, and not to the wine. Or to the weed. Or to the. Or to the gummies. Or to the brownies. Look how y'all look at. When was the last time when it got stressful. You went straight to him. When you got fed up. It's the last time you went to him. <laughs> yeah, the man shows us the posture of faith. And the first posture he shows is a posture of presenting myself and my problem to God. Here I am. And here's my issue. <laughs> Number two, the text says he kneels down to Jesus. Now, let's deal with this. Because the man realizes that there is a difference of, of, uh, uh, of position between us. I, I realize that, you know, although I'm a man and, I'm, and you're a man, I realize that you are sent from God. I, I realize that that power that's in you is divine. And as a result, I need to humble myself when I come. I change my posture when I approach you. Come on, y'all. Y'all hear me? I change my posture. And see, some of the challenge that I feel like, and I struggled with this for many years, that people were teaching uh, during the faith movement of the late 80s and early 90s. Uh, they were teaching stuff like, you got to go and command God. I command in Jesus name and I you got to command the situation. Now, do you want to talk to the situation or do you want to talk to God about the situation? Because you can command the situation, but you cannot command God. Look how y'all looking. 
You can't command God. You got to change your posture. He is our father. <laughs> you, you don't go to the father and command the father. And this man who's fed up and probably even more so simply because he, uh, I, I brought my sons to you and I'm angry and frustrated because he's sick, but then I'm frustrated because they couldn't do nothing about it. And so even when I approach you with all this anxiety, I still got enough sense to change my posture. He kneels down. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Come on. Hebrews 4, 16 says, let us therefore uh, come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace in the time of need. Listen, boldness is not the absence of humility. Boldness is not kicking the door of the throne room open and saying, I'm your child. Fix this. When you come to him, you got to change your posture. And I'm not necessarily talking about your physical posture, but, but let me deal with that. for I'm going to deal with that in a second. But I'm talking about your, the, the posture of your heart, this humility that says, God, I know you are bigger than me, bigger than me. Remember the greater and the lesser, that suzerain covenant, that you are the greater and I am the lesser. You are the one with the power. I am the one who's asking for your power. But now let me talk about the physical. It ain't going to hurt you every once in a while to get down on your knees and talk to God. And that's the thing that I feel like with our generation, our generation and the generations that are, are a little behind us. And then the younger ones, we're not teaching them to go down and lay prostrate. We're not teaching them to kneel. I'm telling you. When I walk out of my room when I was a kid and looked over in my mom and daddy room, daddy would be on his knees. When we had to pray together on Sunday morning, family prayer before church, he would make us get on our knees. And we've come away from that. There is something to be said about humbling yourself, changing your posture. It is. It says I am the lesser. It says I am the child. It says I am the servant. And I realize that what I'm in need of you have. And when we see people who received miracles from Jesus in the Bible. Oh, come on. Like the Seraphonician woman. Come on, that's the woman who uh, whose daughter was vexed with the devil. And she cried out to Jesus and says, hey, could you heal my daughter? And Jesus says, listen, I've only come from the lost sheep of Israel. He says, I can't throw the children's bread to the dogs. The Bible says that she became increasingly desperate as she got down on her knees and she worshiped him and it got his attention. And he says, woman, I have not the people that I came to get. I ain't seen this level of faith in them. I should have saved this text and preached it. <laughs> he says, listen, because of your faith, your daughter is made well. Because she pushed past what seem seemingly was his rejection. But what got his attention was her posture. We call it worship. Jesus called it faith. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying. And so when we kneel down, we are saying to God, I'm going to abase myself. Come on, the word teaches us, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. And in due time, in due season, he shall exalt you. Maybe we should get back to, come on, changing our posture, getting down on our knees. Maybe you need to, listen, don't let it be that the only time you get down on your knees by your bed is because you're looking for something under there. Maybe we need to change our posture. Maybe our children need to see it. You keep fussing about a cantankerous or a mean spouse. Maybe they need to see you on your knees. Because that's a posture of faith. That there is something. There is someone bigger than me. 
Hey everybody, I had to stop because of time and I'll come back next week and finish this up. Um, my prayer is that even between now and next Sunday, you will take some time to build your faith. And um, so we'll be talking about that for the next couple of weeks. But I want to give you an opportunity this morning to connect with the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. Listen, if, if you know that we're entering into a, a season of transition and growth and you need the right relationships in this season, the first relationship you need is a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. And I want to give you an opportunity to do that. And uh, here at Christ Centered, here's how we do that. There's a number on the screen. If you would text New Life to that number, you'll be able to connect with a team there that will um, make sure they lead you in a way that you get connected to the Lord Jesus Christ and have this foundation laid in your relationship with the Lord Jesus. Uh, also, if you want the other relationship there would be the relationship of a church home or a church family. And so if you'd like to join Christ Center, there is a number again on the screen. You can text the word connect and they're waiting to get you connected. I'd love to be your pastor and to walk with you as you move forward in God. Look, I want to bless you this morning. And I want to say to you that uh, you are ambassadors of Christ. You leave this place to seek and to save that which is lost. I declare in Jesus' name that everything your hands touch will prosper. I declare that uh, every place the soles of your feet shall tread upon you shall possess. I declare in Jesus' name you're above only, not beneath. You're the head and not the tail. On your job, favor waits for you. You are not the problem. You are the solution to the problem. I declare money comes to you, but not just money. The wisdom to handle the money that comes your way. I declare in Jesus' name that your home is established in peace, that your marriage is whole, healthy, and satisfied in the Lord Jesus Christ, that your single life is whole, healthy, and satisfied in the Lord Jesus Christ, and the blessings of the Lord be upon you. Wholeness, benefit, prosperity, and favor may be your portion both now and forever. Go in peace, and the God of peace goes with you. I love you. Have an amazing week. You say you want to really get connected with believers and followers of Christ. Well, it's really simple. Just go to our Christ Center Church Facebook page. Go to the More tab and click Groups. From there, you'll see the Christ Center Nation group and click Join. Finding your tribe has never been so easy when you join Christ Center Nation today. Jesus.